My name's Alan Butler. Um, I'm a historical writer and researcher. I work on my own and publish books of my own, uh, and also a whole series of books with uh, my colleague and friend, Christopher Knight. I tend to specialise in books about ancient subjects, particularly the megalithic period, but I've also written books about the Middle Ages, about the survival of uh, the goddess in comparative history uh, and religion, and um, just about anything to do with history. Now, let's talk a little bit about your, your latest book. Um... Yes, the, the book, the latest book is Before the Pyramids. Um, it follows on from our earlier research uh, with regard to um, uh, a, a mathematical system which we discovered, which goes right back to about 3500 BC. Uh, it's called, well, we call it the megalithic system because it spans the megalithic period. Uh, it's an integrated measuring system. Uh, it, it works out time, space, distance, volume, capacity, and even temperature. The measuring system is based upon uh, the size and also the mass of the Earth, all of which I appreciate sounds too incredible to be true, but uh, the, the numbers are there. And the one thing that Chris and I always do is the numbers are there. If anybody wants to get a calculator out and check, they can. Now, as far as the new book is concerned, Before the Pyramids, it's an extension of the research of that um, incredible measuring system, um, how it was applied to not just the building of a series of very ancient structures in Great Britain, especially henges, but also uh, to the pyramids, the three major pyramids on the Giza Plateau in Egypt. And uh, passing on from that, even more unbelievably, how the system survived and resurfaced at the end of the 18th century uh, was partly responsive to the planning and building of the city of Bath, but most specifically the planning and building of Washington, D.C. Interesting. OK, tell me a little bit more about that, because Washington, D.C., along with uh, the Vatican and the City of London, are considered the three key cities, if you like, for, for um, uh, the three aspects, if you like, of, of, of rulership, of governorship. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about yeah. that. Um, we know that at the time that Washington, D.C. was planned, at the end of the 18th century, uh, one of the prime movers uh, in that was uh, Thomas Jefferson, who eventually became the third President of the United States, was a great friend of George Washington's. Um, Thomas Jefferson was a, a scientist as well as being a politician. He was interested in just about everything. And we know that he, together with um, George Washington and uh, a lot of the other founding fathers, were very closely associated with Freemasonry, which eventually would become Scottish Rite Freemasonry uh, in the United States. We assume it is through that medium uh, that the megalithic measurements uh, have been regenerated uh, and used uh, for the planning of Washington. Um, what happened was, uh, when the uh, plans for Washington were laid down uh, by a guy called Pierre Charles L'Enfant, who was a Frenchman, another leading uh, Freemason, uh, all the plans were based upon a triangle. Uh, and the three points of the triangle uh, were the Capitol building, uh, the place where the Washington Monument was originally intended to stand, it actually got moved slightly, and the White House. But just below the White House is an area which is presently a park. It's called Ellipse Park. And the centre of Ellipse Park is the absolute centre of the District of Washington. So D.C. in Washington, D.C. stands for the District of Columbia. Um, and the Ellipse Park, the centre of the Ellipse Park, is right at the centre of the District of Columbia, which on the map is shaped like a diamond. So if you take a line down and across, that's where the Ellipse is. Now, all the megalithic measurements in Washington, D.C. are taken from the very centre of the Ellipse Park. And um, we were drawn to the Ellipse Park because the measurement across it is 366 megalithic yards, and that's a very significant number. It crops up time and again. Uh, for example, the henge underlying Stonehenge has a circumference of 366 megalithic yards. It's important because it represents a defined uh, percentage of the Earth's um, circumference, the Earth's polar circumference, uh, on megalithic um, geometry. Megalithic geometry is older than the kind of geometry we use now. It has 366 degrees to a circle and not 360. Uh, it's Earth geometry, if you like. It fell into disuse 
around about 1700 BC. We know it still exists uh, in terms of the pound and the pint, which are both derived from it, but the linear measurement, the basic linear measurement, which is known as the megalithic yard, um, that uh, seems to have fallen into disuse, as I said, about 1700 BC. Then all of a sudden, at the 18th century, it crops up again. And when Washington DC was laid out, um, measurements were taken from the centre of where the ellipse is now to all the uh, major thoroughfares, to all the major intersections, the squares and the circuses, to the major buildings, the White House and the Capitol building. And all of those measurements are multiples of 366 megalithic yards. So underpinning the present street plan of Washington is another one, another um, completely different pattern. Uh, and what it shows up on a, on a map um, is a huge arrow, a, a really beautiful, elaborate arrow, which points to the very centre uh, of the ellipse. And we believe that the reason that happens is because underneath the ellipse, just at the end of the American Civil War, a chamber was dug. Uh, and we believe that something of great significance uh, is in that chamber. Uh, existing there still today? We assume it must still be there because, um, as far as we are aware, the ellipse has never been touched since. Um, I think um, it's still known about uh, because, uh, let me give you an example, when the Pentagon was built in Washington, D.C., it wasn't started until 1941, so we're talking about a long time after Washington was planned. But it has the same kind of megalithic measurement relationships uh, both with the capital and with the centre of the ellipse as buildings which have been there right from the start. The same is true of the uh, World War II memorial which is on the mile in Washington which once again has megalithic measurements with all the other structures so it's still known about but as far as we can tell we know that when the ellipse was laid out the way it is now uh, in uh, 1880 uh, that um, there was work going on at its centre the guy who was in charge of the military engineers uh, that laid out the ellipse reported that he'd finished the job, he couldn't touch the centre because excavations were taking place there. We assume that's when the chamber was built and we can't find any trace of that having been dug again since. Fascinating. Uh, remedial work has been done to the ellipse since but uh, no deep excavations as far as we can find. And, and dare you hazard a guess as, as to what might be there? We think it is highly likely that what lies below um, the ellipse in Washington, D.C. Um, is something to do with the patriarch Enoch. Enoch uh, is uh, pre-Judaic, um, but he's uh, taken on in, in Jewish religion um, and also ultimately in Christian religion. He's one of the earliest patriarchs, but when you really analyse uh, what Enoch was, uh, he clearly stands out as being pre-Judaic. He's just really been adopted by them. Um, we are told in the Book of Enoch, which incidentally disappeared for centuries but has resurfaced in Ethiopia, we're told in the Book of Enoch that Enoch had um, a commentary with God and a commentary with uh, a group of people known as the Watchers. Mm. We don't know exactly who the Watchers were, but they seem probably to have been associated with the same individuals who held the knowledge which led to the megalithic system of measurement being invented in the first place. Uh, so we assume that, the, that what we're looking for is documentation, probably in the form of scrolls, um, which were originally vouchsafed to the place where the Temple of Jerusalem was or originally built. Uh, we know that um, something was dug up from under there by the Knights Templar, a um, strange group of uh, fighting monks uh, in the uh, 12th century. They dug it up. <coughs> Almost certainly it came to France, probably to Troyes in um, Champagne. Ultimately, it was transported to Scotland uh, and resided for two or three hundred years beneath Rosslyn Chapel, <coughs> we know that Rosslyn Chapel was um, extensively renovated just about the same time as we think that the hole was dug beneath the ellipse in Washington DC and we think it was at that time, just after the American Civil War, 
that whatever had originally been below Jerusalem was taken to Washington, D.C. And we think that was because it was known just how significant Washington, D.C. would ultimately become. It was, if you like, the new Jerusalem. Fascinating. I, I, uh, Enoch, if memory serves, <coughs> was, was considered one of uh, uh, the long, the, the long lived ones, was he not? Absolutely, he yes. He was supposed yes. to have lived to some 800 years? Or yes, is that yes. Correct? Uh, according to uh, uh, Jewish chronology, he was related to Noah. But of course, all these char characters already existed in um, Sumerian and then Babylonian uh, tradition. So they were kind of borrowed, I think, at the time that the uh, Hebrew nation was captive in Babylonia. Um, so they're definitely inherited rather than strictly Judaic. But yes, he was one of the long-lived ones. So, um, uh, so to say that um, whatever lies beneath Ellipse Park um, is connected with Enoch, um, dare, you, dare you venture to, to suggest what it might actually be? Are we thinking in terms perhaps of the Ark or, or one of these other uh, potentially mythological or biblical artefacts? We thought long and hard about the possibility of the Ark, uh, but in the end we went back to um, Masonic traditions. There is a tradition in Freemasonry um, which dates back, uh, in principle, to uh, Solomon's time. Mm -hmm. And it's suggested that when the temple was first being built and the excavations were made for the temple, uh, that certain things were found there at that time. Um, now, this is Masonic tradition. There is no historicity about this, but it's played out uh, in Freemasonic uh, ritual. Um, and the ritual explains uh, how uh, the people concerned dug down, um, how they found um, a golden chevron, and on the golden chevron, uh, which was the golden plate, chevron-shaped plate, uh, and on there were uh, lots of things, predominantly the name of God. Um, now, whether you can take the name of God literally to be the name of God, or whether you can take it to be information that could only be known uh, by God and God's close associates, we're not sure. But also in the same tradition, scrolls are mentioned. Um, all, of, all of known science uh, was supposed to have been included uh, in this treasure. Um, and we were very interested to see that the, the arrow that, that is picked out in the megalithic measurements on the ground in Washington, D.C. and pointing to where we think the chamber is, is shaped like a chevron. So we think there is definitely a connection. So we expect that there are scrolls there. We expect that the scrolls will tell us who the watchers were and where uh, megalithic measurement came from. I mean, incidentally, while we were researching uh, before the pyramids, uh, we also came across the fact that the metric system, which ostensibly was not uh, invented until the late 18th century in France, had been used uh, and uh, probably predominantly created by the Sumerians around about 1500 BC. It's almost exactly the same system. Um, and then, of course, when we start to look at the oldest of the uh, British henges, particularly the super henges in Yorkshire, we find out that they were laid out using pendulums which were a metre in length. So uh, we're looking at not one but two measuring systems, one of which supposedly disappeared altogether, um, and according to some scientists, never existed in the first place. And the other one, the metric system, which quite embarrassingly for science, and especially for French scientists, definitely was not created at the end of the 18th century. Fascinating. Alan Butler, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.